guys, it's so nice to have you here for Ori and the Blind Forest. Now, here's the fun part. I have actually never heard any of this music until just now, when we started the stream, and I went, eh, Spotify, and I got ready in Chrome. And what I realized is this was a great choice. I'm pretty sure Chaos suggested it. Pretty sure Chaos said, what if we do this song? Hint, hint, it's what we should do. Um, you guys just give him ham, give him guitar pick emotes, give him a lighter. I don't know. Tell him thank you, because this game is freaking awesome, and I actually want to play this game now. Like, screw the music. Like, let's quit this and just start playing it. This game looks amazing. It also said when I started the stream, it's a Metroidvania game. I'm in. That's all I needed to hear. I didn't need to hear much else. Okay, so. Ori and the Blind Forest. We are starting with what I believe to be the first song in this uh, in this uh, game. Now, I guess there were two games. This is the Blind Forest. Uh, the graphics look freaking amazing. The art style is unreal. The music is incredible. So, uh, yeah, let's listen. So, first off, Ori. Ori. Ori's going to call it Ori. And we're going to call this... Lost in the Storm. I don't even know the story of this game, and I bet this music's going to tell me it. So, uh, what do we always do when we're analyzing? Well, first off, we leave space up here because we want to have our diatonic notes. Now, I can almost guarantee all these notes are going to be diatonic to some mode, most likely a major scale, right? So we're going to leave that space empty, and we're probably going to start down here so we can make things really clear for you guys. So first thing is, let's figure out what key we're in. This is going to be so freaking awesome today. Are you kidding me? This song is amazing. So there are a couple things initially. So when I'm when we're analyzing, this song is in B minor, essentially. Or I'm sorry, D minor. So first I wrote an F sharp because I figured, oh, we're, we're in D major, but it's definitely D minor. So there are a couple things. First off, keys have different sensations. So I don't have perfect pitch. You don't need perfect pitch to be able to, to tell this. So the key of E flat major has a very milky tone to it. The key of F sharp major has a very bright tone. It's You don't have to play the key of F sharp major on a harpsichord, but if the key of F sharp major were an instrument, it would be a harpsichord. Sizzly and bright. If the key of E flat major were played, it doesn't have to be played on a tuba, but if the key of E flat major were an instrument, it would be a tuba. Okay, so there's this joke in Spinal Tap, the film, where they say, uh, oh, this is in D minor, the saddest of all keys. And they joke, right? But it's it's not really that untrue. D minor has a, an in-between neutral. A, the key of A and the key of E are very neutral. F sharp, very sizzly. E flat, very warm. And I'll prove it to you right now. You know, just even playing an E flat major chord. So this is the beginning of this analysis. You'll notice the overtones are very woo. Right? Watch the key of F sharp. It has, it's almost as, as though you flip the phase switch. A lot more low end. Right? And it's not because of how low the note is. Versus. Okay? So D minor, which is what this key is. Well, it's kind of major for a second. And then it goes back to minor. So, first things first, 
the key is D minor, okay? Essentially, most of the song. And there's a D major chord, and then it goes to the minor, right? So we're going to talk about how all these things are happening. And again, I'm analyzing this in real time with you guys. So the funny thing is, this song is not going to just have diatonic notes. We're going to be stepping outside of stuff. Wait, Chaos, do you think this should be music and performing arts? Because I, I put it as Ori on purpose, so people can, who are Ori can, can see it. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't remember what got us more viewers last time. Was it music and performing arts? Because that's all I want to do is make sure people can see this. So it did better that way. Great. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Okay, so. Okay. So let's start off. So this feels like D major. Right? D F sharp. Okay, so. So this first moment, we're not we're kinda gonna have a lot of fermatas in this, okay? Um, so why does it change? What's the theory behind major and minor changes to the same chord? We're going to discuss right now. In some ways, you can call it what's called a Picardy third, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Let's start by analyzing first, and then we'll, well, let's start by getting the chord changes first, and then we'll analyze. So this is a great chord. There's a suspension and a third. Okay. Like an 11 chord is what that would be. So you hear... And you also hear the the um, synth has that going on, F sharp and G. So, which means you're getting one, two, three, four, five, all those notes clustered together, okay? So that's the opening chord. It's essentially a D, I won't call it 11 because there's no dominant 7, so it's a D add 11, okay? This is kind of our, our initial moment where she sings the... Okay. Great, so great, cheese. Mm. So essentially, the fundamental harmony underneath this, this little bit right here, is D minor, B flat major, F major, to G minor, then we go to D major. So we're kind of in D minor here, but I think this song is mostly gonna be analyzed in D major. I can already kind of sense that. So let's keep going. That's huge. That's that's straight up Dario Marinelli. That's those are some chord changes from V for Vendetta the film. Do you remember that scene when Evie's outside in the rain? I think the changes were um uh what were they? What were they? Let me actually find it. Those are some crazy changes. All right, I'm I know I'm kind of slow starting here, but we're we're going to get there. Marinelli V for Vendetta. So Evie's story, check out these changes. Evie Reborn is what it's called. That change. Huh. Dominant seven, try to turn away to a major seven chord. So let's see what happens here. It's going to be a cousin of that, okay? So D major, B flat major. So D major to B flat major. Subtle shift. Look at this subtle shift. Oh, yeah, you can see that, yeah? D minor to B flat major before, but D major to B flat major, what a different feeling. G major, there's our kind of Dario moment to G major. Okay, to what? E flat major? Yeah, just we'll say E flat for now. And then to D minor or major? Minor. 
And that very much feels like Aladdin to me. That cymbal swell, and the, it feels like when he goes to uh, that pharaoh-looking thing in the sand desert. And then, and then it's essentially D-sus eventually. So this, this is hit, and then it goes into D-sus, which is indeterminate. Is it major, is it minor? We don't know. It could be, da, da. it could be suspending the minor third. Suspending the third that's minor. It could be suspending the third that's major. So sus is a fun way to say, we're not going to give you all the information yet. Oh, what's up, Sonny? How you doing? Oh, we got some subscribers. Pomic, what's going on? Uh, thank you so much for gifting a, a tier one sub to, the, to my uh, community, to WRay441. Thank you. We are analyzing Ori and the Blind Forest, and I'm going to give you a sub song in these four chords. Pomic gifting out some subs. Pomic, thank you for. We're going to go back to the song. Thank you so much for that subscription. Thank you. We might get to 450 today, which would be insane. Okay, so let's keep going. Great. These are new chords. We haven't heard these chords yet. Great. Very Irish. Very, very, very Irish. So Irish music, at least in my experience, there's an interesting uh, relationship between Eastern music and Irish music. So the Celtic uses the major pentatonic and minor pentatonic more than people think. So does Mongolian music, you know, from way back in the day. So does Eastern music uses pentatonic. Pentatonic is this sound, right? The also rock music. But if you were to go the classic sort of entrance point in uh, it's, that's sort of the same as in jazz, two five one, in in ancient Chinese music and ancient Japanese music. These parallel fourths are a big thing. They're usually happening in the minor pentatonic scale. But also Irish music. The Celtic music has a lot of major pentatonic. Okay? So when I hear pentatonic, part of me goes, Mmm, we're kind of Celtic? Or Kel Celtic much? Actually, that needs to be clipped. Celtic much? Great, so... Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's keep analyzing. This is beautiful, man. We're, we're, we're right here right now. Okay. Minor. Let's do this. Let's make this a full bar, because it really is. It's, it's sort of rubato. The conductor sort of slowly guiding. One and two and one and two and a G A. Okay, it's kind of that, and that lilts us into the sus. And the suspension is what I mean by when I say sus, okay? So, thank you for, for giving me bits, Vanessa Sue. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're in sus land. D sus. What's God's favorite chord? G sus. It's like Jesus. All right, cool. Uh, okay. We'll call that just, you know, the tempo picks up. And then we go back into this situation. So D minor, da, 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 over C. Thank you for subscribing, Bert Stanton. Dang. Well, we're in this chord progression, Bert, so my sub song is going to have to be of that variety. So thanks for subscribing, Argentinian boy. Subscribe to your one. Oh, Bert Stanton, subscribe is number one. Oh, Bert, are you ready for these chord changes? Oh, Bert. D minor stuff. I hope you are because it's about to get minor and then major. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Bert. Thank you seriously. It means so much. Okay. You're amazing, Pomic. 
You're amazing. Winnie Harper. Girl, I was watching your stream the other day, but I had a recording session, so I was cheating by watching, and I couldn't raid you because I wasn't streaming anymore. I'm going to be raiding you. I'm going to be looking out for you to raid you. It's so good to have you here, girl. Um, Rigamortis. Thank you for being a Rigamortis. Thank you for following. So we're analyzing this. So the core changes right now. What a great thing. So there are two things here that I love. So I want to just make sure. So sometimes there are walk downs and sometimes there are chord changes. So I walk down. That's a walk down. Same D minor chord over C versus. Now I want to make what we're listening for are E naturals. Is this a walk down or a chord change? Let's see. Yeah, there's an E natural in her voice. So it's C. Great. Great. And then what? B flat major seven is really what's happening melodically. I mean, this is really a power chord. This is where it gets Celtic. So this vibe of that feels very. Gaelic, you know, versus when it, when the, when the power chords are in the bottom, it really does feel like oh okay, we're kind of in a in an ancient mid um, medieval land, right? Which is ironic to me because the idea of parallel fifths. This is a like a music theory college nerd thing. You're not supposed to do perfect fifths. By the way, hype train sixty nine percent. Okay, I mean that's awesome. Thank you. All right. But I, you know, I want to call this G minor for now. I think that was what I would play if a if a singer were to hire me and say, "Give me a version of this song," and I were to play triads. I play G minor. That is just D five. I'm not even gonna call that minor or major. It's kind of minor, but. Now I'll call it D minor. All these can be turned into their rudimentary form. Now let's explain that real quick. So a power chord is essentially uh, two notes from a triad, okay? So if I'm playing D and F on any instrument, on piano, two singers singing, any two instruments, if I play D and A, just perfect fifths, okay? That is called a power chord. Here's why. This could be, watch, watch what I sing and how it changes the quality. So watch, oh, thank you for following Alexi IS. So watch this, I'll play the fifths and I'll sing an F natural. Uh, feels sad, feels minor. Watch this, I'll sing an F sharp. Uh, let me bring it up an octave to make it more obvious. Uh, sounds happy-ish, right? Kind of melancholy because of the way I'm singing it, but. Here again, here's the F natural. Ooh, sad. Ooh, versus major. Ooh, okay. Um, I know, Vanessa, you're right. And it will happen. I need to create time for it. There's a lot changing in my internal life to make sure I have room for the things I want to do versus hustling and hustling. I want to create more than I want to perform and mimic. So, so yes, I agree. Thank you. So, okay. So, um, when you have just the one and five, if I hadn't sing the F sharp or the minor third F natural, okay. Uh, five chords, how is five chords not a double stop? Well, five, Power, power chords are, I think they are considered double stops. Maybe classically in some schools they don't call them that, but I've always thought of cello players going as playing double stops. So I think it is a double stop. That's a terminology thing, but I, I like that question. So so um, the power chord lets us kind of sit back and go, well, if the song's gone D major, let's, let's get back into the page focus. If it's gone D major, whoa, D, right? There's no little M, D major. But then it also has gone D minor, a limb. If both of those are happening and it ends on a power chord, it really gives us the sensation of we get to decide where the story goes. 
I have not played this game. I've just seen a few pieces of artwork. I can already tell it's a magical, mystical world. There's a mountain back here with like blue volcanic stuff. There's this really tender love story between this big thing and this small little character. Um, I think a lot is open to interpretation in this world. And this makes us feel this way. Okay, so this is great. That's really great scoring in my opinion. It's a giant tree. Got it. Cool. Okay. Thank you for doing stuff. Someone, oh, someone donated, and I and I can bear. Hulu Step donated money. Thank you so much for donating, Hulu Step. I appreciate it so much. All right, let's keep going. So we've got that five chord, and again, I wrote D minor because in general it's been D minor, and that's what I'd play. But it's technically a perfect fifth. Got it? Okay. Again, we're repeating this, and the bass goes down an octave to support even more. Okay? This is very nice. Okay. Now, why is that A natural so important? Why, is that, why do I care to write B flat major 7? Well, B flat major 7 is a very different feeling. That feels a little more settled and feels a little more like a block chord moment. Like, oh, we're just laying out clear foundation. Whereas this feels a little more ethereal, the actual melody. And I think at one point she goes... There's, there's an A natural happening. My point is that A natural makes us feel less settled than if there were only B flats. That gives us context. It's almost like saying, um, uh, if you're like, oh, I got you a bike. You're like, oh, a bike gets me places. But if I say, oh, no, and I pull it out, and it's one of those old-school Schwinn ones, you're like, oh, it is a bike, but it's that 50s style that makes me feel like I'm in that movie, The Sandlot. Yeah, that's a, that, that's almost different than a bike because most bikes are used to get you from point A to point B. But this Schwinn bike, this is made to make me feel like I'm in the 50s and I'm in Sandlot, the movie. Very different purpose for that bike. B-flat major 7, very different purpose than B-flat triad. You know, very different purpose. Okay, cool. Keep going. Okay. There, there's the A. So there was the A I was looking for. There it is. So it was in the melody. I knew it was in the melody. I don't know why. This. Okay, let's go. We're almost done with this song. Sorry, I keep rewinding the wrong spot. Oh, I heard some noises. Subscribed. Or no, following. Uh, new, it says new subscriber, but followed. Uh, circumcised Gamer. Honestly, I'm glad that you had that done. Because it helps you in very few ways. Uh, I'm sorry. Why did America do this to us? Okay. Nice to have you here, Circumcised Gamer. <laughs> So full bar of F, this changes things dramatically. This is a thing I've been working on in my own songwriting recently. It's not just about harmony. And it's not just about the order of the chords. It's how many beats of the of, of, of the melody do we have, right? An example of that would be this. If I am... So, so in this song, first F goes to G minor after only two beats. Okay, listen. Listen. See? Watch right here. Bam. F to G within two beats. Watch here though. Four beats of F here. Now G. Oh, and that's actually G major. Oh God, this is so great. And there's a Michael Jackson moment there too. Suspension CB. That is very nice. Okay, so that's a very different sensation. Having more space. This is actually G sus. And then right to G. So Jesus, so we're all close to God's favorite chord, or we are in God's favorite chord. God bless. Uh, so, um, so, but, uh, so, um, uh, this is like this. If in a conversation I said, "Dude, get out of the way. Why are you always like this?" Right away, that has a di that lands differently than if I said, "Dude, why do you always?" Or what was the line I said? Dude, why? What did I just say? I'll make up a new line. Uh, uh, dude, why do you always do this? What's wrong with you? Right after one after the other, that seems sort of aggressive and like I'm spiraling, right? I'm not really trying to judge someone, but watch if I give space. Dude, why do I always do this? What is wrong with you? It lands differently. It's like, ow. The person on the other end goes, dang. Like initially it was ba ba. 
It was, okay, you're crazy and you're being angry. The other way is ba, space, let me really let this land, okay? So when we go F to G with our root notes and we only have two beats to do it, it's beautiful, it's haunting. Here, it's a different type of haunting, okay? So I'm gonna circle these as they happen one more time and have you really experience that. Here it comes. How's this feel? How did that feel? Now how does this next one feel? Very different. Right now, more space. Okay. That is nice. That's a subtle change and that dramatically changes songwriting. Okay. So it's not just, oh dude, I learned all seven diatonic chords, bro. Dude, I know all the modes, man. I know everything I need to know. Why would I even take a lesson with anyone? You know, that kind of mentality. I've had people say, oh, I'll take a lesson with you, Zane, but I don't know if I can really, I can really uh, want to do it. Uh, oh, 12 rounds. Thanks for the bits. And Professor Milk, thank you. For some reason, uh, I, uh, from this distance, I see a new subscriber, but it's a new follower. Thank you, Professor Milk. So, um, so uh, there is uh, so much being told in music. And my goal here with this music theory of gaming, and eventually with like an educational show about this stuff, and eventually with a book and all that, we're only on our third episode, so this in, in due time, is to highlight these subtle differences and make music more enjoyable, more savory. I, I love this stuff. Exactly, Awesome Pants. Pa what a great name. Are you just overpowered? Are your Awesome Pants just like, they're too strong? Like, what RPG are your pants from? Because they sound nice. And I love your name. Okay. Okay, so here's my question. This is our third week doing this music theory of gaming thing. I don't know how many of you have downloaded the app Tenuta yet and started working on harmonic analysis, but what are those three chords? We've heard these three chords before in the song in a different order. What are these chords right here? Something just fall? I heard something get hit. Huh, all right. Uh, what are these chords? Chord number one, chord number two, chord number three. What are those chords? Anyone know? Can anyone analyze them? D minor's right. The third chord's D minor. You're right. It's essentially D minor. It could be D, D perfect fifth, you know, D, D power chord. But what are these two chords for it? Yeah, that's right, Awesome Pants. Exactly. Yep. We're just walking back up in a different order. Feels very different. But these are the chords we've already used. Simil not dissimilar to when I say the word and, and then I say apple. Or no, let me give two words that are more similar. If I say um, and, and then I talk to a guy named Andy. Very different words. They share three letters. Uh, but when they're put in a different order, actually they're in the same order. That's a bad example too. Uh, okay, and and Dan. And is like, oh, adding two things together. Dan is a dude. The letters are just in a different order. So when you hear, da, 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 what right here? Da, 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 okay. Very different experience than, da, da, da. I mean, do you see how these are literally the opposites of each other? Very different feeling, you know? A very bad example of this would be, and this is a terrible example, if I were to say, I love you, it lands on you and it feels like, wow, that's good to know. But what if I did love you, I? <laughs> doesn't work because it's terrible grammar, but it's that's inquisitive. It's, huh. Howard, um, or not Howard, um, uh, Z what's his name? God, Zimmer? Helen Zimmer has this masterclass thing on that app, that website, and he talks about how most of music is question and answer. P uh, uh, preposition response. So this is da, 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 that resolves to our key, our root key of D. This is da, 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 da. Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen there. Maybe it's gonna go da da da. <laughs> you know? Okay, cool. So let's keep going. Great. This is a new section. Da, da, da. Mm. So it's now longer bars. Da, da. 
I write D to C for a bar. D minor to C. And then it's really just perfect fifths. And we'll call that D5. And we'll end on that. And it just sort of does this, right? Okay, so this song is amazing for a, a, just a lot of reasons. So we haven't even talked about the orchestration yet, right? We've only talked about the... Um, uh, uh, yeah, that's right out... Oh, that's nice. Thanks. I saw the end where you got third. Yeah, I was close to getting third. But uh, I forgot to talk about my my family, <laughs> you know, my grandpa. All right. Mm. So here we go. Um, let's listen to the whole thing. Watch what's happening just harmonically, and then we're going to start talking about orchestrations and sort of uh, more of the philosophy, I guess, of it, okay? So. Mm. This, at 11, there's a lot of reverb. Okay. Here we go. T major. Again, I gave tries, but they're really fifths. They're really power chords, those two. What a different experience, having more space there. Crescendo. Okay, so that's the overall Harmony. I'm going to delete all those red lines, but you get the idea when we're playing it through. So um, let's listen to the instruments. Okay, what's going on with the instruments here? So a couple things. In general, people respond to strings and they feel that they're cinematic. A lot of times when someone says like, oh man, can you make your guitar part sound a little more cinematic? I wanted that cinematic feel. What they probably want is some sort of a guitar a string ish thing strings can do that maybe they want more more tense there are like four or five ways on a guitar i can capture that if i really wanted to capture it put strings in the score <laughs> just feels cinematic to people there's you hear the bow over the string there's air there's this air that's that's given um one of the most human sounding vocal sounding instruments is the string so if you want something cinematic probably piano and strings if i were to play these same chords through my guitar amp on on uh, wednesday or friday uh, this upcoming week from other streams when i'm plugged in uh i uh, it wouldn't sound anything like this and you'd maybe like that oh it's like kind of like ori but it's different because tambourine instrument changes things dramatically so what do we hear We hear so much reverb, so it feels like it's in a hall. You're in a church. Maybe that feels sort of holy. So if you're like, man, this thing is like heart opening, that might be why. Piano. With a great sounding piano. You can hear the hammer sitting. Strings. What do you know? Huh. Wonder why this sounds cinematic. Strings. By the way, are you guys able to hear my voice when it's playing? Because I just realized the levels are a bit... They're, they're close to me not being audible. You can? Good. Okay, good. Okay, so again, strings. One voice. What does it make me think of? Enya? <laughs> you know? Reverberated choral music, but there's just one singer. So all these things are artistic choices. I'm not saying that composers sit in their bedroom and go, All right, I'm going to get me some strings. I'm cinematic. I'm British for some reason. I'm an old man. Composers can only be old. I will have uh, one female voice, and she will sing like Enya, and thus creating the moment. No, what happens truly is we learn these things. We learn, we learn, we learn, we practice, we shed, and these things happen automatically. I'm not sitting here going, 
Okay, time to calculate. Melodic minor will make them feel like we're in 1964. Like a Sun Ra song. And when I feel, when they think, I'm not analyzing that while I'm playing. There's no time for that. Um, a great tromboner in LA. A tr trombone, tromboner. Great trombone player in LA. Uh, 12 years ago? Had this great moment. Uh, I'm trying to remember his last name. Um, what was his last name? Um, great Los Angeles trombone player. Uh, Isaac, I believe, is his first name. I could be totally spacing, though. What was his last name? Um, it wasn't Ryan Porter. Isaac Smith. Yeah, okay, Isaac Smith. So I was doing a gig in... Um, I was doing a gig in L.A. at the Edison Hotel with Isaac Smith playing trombone. Kamasi Washington was playing sax. I think Tony Allen was playing drums. And I can't remember who else. It was the four or five of us. Anyway, the sound guy said, Hey, uh, just so you guys know, um, the mic, you need to really get your trombone on that mic, man. Okay, cool. And Kamasi, just make sure you get your sack. Really really get that on the mic, you know? Make, make sure you're thinking about that. And Isaac looked over at me. He said, Man, this ain't telling, bro, man. We ain't thinking when we're playing. Are we thinking? Are we thinking when we're playing? I was like, Nope. He said, that's right. We, ain't, we, don't, we don't got time for that, Mr. Soundman, so you're going to have to put the mic where it's good for us. His point was, we're so, anyone who's making music is so in the flow, I, we're not analyzing really during the process of creation. But afterwards, we practice, we probe, we analyze, we consider, we conjecture, and that informs our next moment of free creativity. So sometimes a director will come in and go, uh... I want it to be more cinematic. And then we turn on our analysis cap as musicians. Oh, I bet strings would help. I bet strings. Thank you for helping me get the job done for you. But we're not going to sit there most times and go, all right, I want this song to be a cinematic. <laughs> Check my art history is going to be cinematic. And my next, it's like there's usually a moment of just free form expression. And we awaken from it after watching the game. And, oh, this feels like Ori. And later on, someone like me comes around and analyzes it. Or someone like ourselves analyzes our own work. And we go, oh, remember this for next time. But the point is, it's all flow state, right? Exactly, echolocations. Yeah, Charlie Parker. Is that his exact quote? Because I remember something like that. That's so great. That Exactly. The quote echolocations uh, gave was, uh, master your instrument, master the music, and then forget all that crap and just play. That's That feels very accurate. Uh, love me some tromboner. Uh, yeah, it was a stacked lineup. It was crazy. And that was like every Tuesday we did that gig for, I don't know, six months. It was a great gig. Okay, so, um, uh, strings, piano, and voice. Um, just so you know, there's an instrument coming in in about 10 seconds. I want you guys in the chat to tell me what instrument it is. First off, have we talked yet about this delayed harpsichord? That wasn't the instrument I was going to talk about. It could, it doesn't have to be a harpsichord. Actually, I can't tell because there's so much reverb in this track. It could be a Japanese instrument, a koto. It could be a guitar, 12 string guitar. It could be a mandolin, but it has delay on it and you hear that string. You got it, Echo Locations. Thanks for lurking, man. Could be harp. Totally. And the glockenspiel's in there too, but here's what I'm curious about. What? Now, if that doesn't go low enough, I, to me it sounds like an English horn, but it, it probably is an oboe. Because the lowest note on an oboe is a B-flat, and that doesn't go anywhere near a B-flat, but it feels throaty. No, it's an oboe. Yeah, that's a G natural. That's a full sixth above what the oboe's lowest range is. Very, that person has very good tone. Or it's some something else. So what's great about this is, this is very Peter and the Wolf. Who here has heard the the uh, the um, Peter and the Wolf score? Anyone here know what I'm talking about? Not score, I'm sorry. Peter and the Wolf. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of who it was by. I'm, I'm Googling right now. Who composed Peter and the Wolf? Uh, uh huh. Pro Prokofiev in 1936. Cool. So, uh, the duck, the oboe is the duck. The flute is uh, there. There, each instrument is a different person, right? This is a classic thing in scoring music. So, if we're doing 
a Beatles song, you know, there's going to be guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. We know that. Maybe piano. Maybe. If there's a, you know, the band Silverchair, like electric guitars, maybe acoustic guitars, maybe some piano, but vocals and drums and bass. We know the instrumentation. But with scoring, we get to go much more orchestral and much more compositional. So we can give either a theme to a character. We can give a theme to a scene, like a, like a location. We can give a theme, like there are different ways to use themes in scoring, but also we can give an instrument to a character. So when we play saxophone, it's the big monster. You know, like when we do banjo and kazooie in a few weeks, you're gonna be like, oh my God. You'll be like, oh, that clearly gives us the scene. That instrument gives us the scene. So any sort of connecting tissue can happen in a score. So it can be an instrument talking about a person, can be a theme talking about a person, can be an interest, instrument giving you a feeling of a location, etc. It's all about connecting those dots and keeping them consistent throughout the score if that's the score you want to write. So for this, I don't, I have not played the game yet, but that oboe to me, I bet that happens a lot in the game when one of these two characters is on, is on screen doing something emotional. I would guess. Because for it to come in at the end and feel so, it, it feels like, if this were a film or a short film, this is the moment where the character we've been waiting for for 56 seconds, 55 seconds, comes into frame from the shadows and their face is shown. And then it ends. You know, that's the sensation that I get when listening to it. You know? No worries, Fabio. You rock so much. Thanks so much, Fabio. Thank you for being here, man. Give some love to FGNSE, which is Fabio, who's a homie in our Discord, too. By the way, you guys want to hop in that Discord? Because it's fun. Um, oh, I love that. Echo location. I thought maybe it was a reference to Echo the Dolphin, the Sega Genesis game. I actually did not think that. I was just trying to make you laugh, but that's a great name. Jeez, I love it. Um, he's like James Earl Jones, but even deeper. I love it. I love it. Um, it great. It's a great, you're right, spelled differently. Okay, so we did a great job of listening to this and enjoying it and i really really wow i am looking forward to doing some more ori right now uh how are you guys feeling about this how is there are there any questions about this piece of music i'm gonna play it one more time while i oh while i open up my discord to get ready for uh the next song oh why am i not able to hear the sound anymore Huh. For some reason, when I open Discord, it breaks everything. Preferences, audio. Let's fix this. Uh huh. But yeah, any questions are welcomed. Play along with improv? Hey, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I did it last time. It's a good idea. I like that idea. Uh, let's make this Universal Audio Thunderbolt. And make that that. Let's save this. So then let's see if we can listen now. No, I can't hear anything. I can't hear Chrome anymore. What the heck, dude? Uh, let's restart loop back. Okay, I will do that. I will totally do that. Uh, let me just get this thing done. Uh, let's get this done. Huh. There we go. Okay, now I can hear it. Uh, so we're going to go back into this shit, this Discord and get the next song. But first, let's improvise over it. Pleasure, my pleasure, 12 rounds. All right, here we go. Thank you. 
mean, that's pretty insane. I want to actually do that again and figure out where am I listening through through this stuff. Safari input monitor off. Let's turn that off and listen again. Okay, so then it won't be too loud so I can actually play along with it. I mean, that's so cool. So what do we do there? We analyzed, we discovered what sort of harmonies happening out of the song. Thank you for the for the cheer, Vanessa. Uh, so this is an amazing soundtrack and I'm very excited about this and I'm excited for the next song. But that's basically what might have happened if a composer said, let's add some guitar on this. Now I'm fully improvising, so I spent a little more time composing this. By the way, I have to do a hard cutoff in 45 minutes because I have this recording session and I have to make sure I get it done by 10 p.m. because of the neighbors and loud guitar stuff. So we got about 45 minutes left, y'all. Unless we get raided, in which case I'll be like, oh God, what do I do? Do I make my neighbors angry or what? Uh, okay, next song is called The Blinded Forest. I like the order we're going in. Again, we're listening to this together for the first time, okay? And this is three and a half minutes, so we might not get to the whole thing of this. Um, hopefully we do, though. The Blinded Forest. What we're going to do is listen to this song, and we're going to take it in and see what, see how we feel, and uh, analyze it, and get as far as we can. All right, so um, let's let's play this song. Let's do it. B flat minor. Okay. Wow, Dorian. Okay. 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 A lot of two fives in this. Great. 
Yeah, this is fantastic. So this, uh, the analysis of this is going to require a lot more melodic analysis because the chords essentially stay static throughout the whole thing, except for the first minute. But um, very powerful. First off, it's in B flat minor. It stays in that key the whole time. It doesn't do that thing the first song did. The first piece gave us this taste of the sort of elven, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings. Right, and then it bent back into D minor, okay? Okay, so this one stays in B flat minor the whole time, and it essentially revolves around four different chords. B flat minor, E flat major, so it's kind of in B flat minor, it's kind of in B flat Dorian, really is what it's in. It does sound Miyazaki, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's a great ending, and there's a lot of reasons why to do that. Oboe comes back, so it really is an oboe, first off. Ooh. So here's the thing. That sound effect, it's not really an... I don't know what instrument it is. If anything, it's like some weird Foley thing they did. The overtone? There are two tones really there. There's like an A flat... There's like a bunch of tension there, so it's just a sound effect, but it, the, the most predominant tone is A. And then B flat comes in. I mean, that is just really unsettling, okay? Because in a B flat minor chord, you don't have an A natural. You have a B flat, maybe an A flat if you make a seventh, right? Because the way that chords are stacked in general, we should do a quick a quick uh, introduction to this. Let's get into the page cam. So uh, a quick introduction of chords, right? So chords, uh, or else I, sh I should say actually triads, which are what most people call chords. And then chords, okay? So a triad is going to be some note, some other note, and some other note. There will be three of them, hence triad. And they are always spelled in thirds, some version of a third. This is a major third, oops, major third. This is a minor third, okay? But bottom line is it's some sort of third, right? This is not a triad. I mean, it could be eventually if you analyze it in a certain way, but it's it's not. Essentially, the way we spell triads is the fundamental structure is going in thirds, whereas chords have four notes or more. So we have, again, they're all analyzed in thirds. We have a major third. We have a minor third. We have another major third here. But it doesn't matter. They can be different combinations of major and minor thirds. But this is a chord, and it's four notes or more, right? Okay, so... Uh, uh, there are families of notes that make sense for chords. For example, this is an E natural. Uh, this is an F natural. So we have F natural, we have E natural. Cool. But what if this were a different sort of chord? What if this were F minor? Okay. This E natural, were it to be here, is a very unusual sound. I'll play this sound for you. It sounds like this. What if I were to make this note E flat? It's like this. Ah, that's a more settling sound. Because those thirds make more logical sense together when you're talking about diatonic harmony. This thing, which we had before, that's a very unsettling thing. That's exactly, the spy chord, B says B steady. The minor major seven. Very James Bond. And we've talked about that last week. So, when you see an A natural hanging out, have, having its own sort of fun day, and... Uh, you're expecting, you know, an E chord or an A chord or, so, or a D minor even, something with an A in it, but no, no, no. The first chord we hear is B flat minor. So we're in B flat minor. We have all the flats necessary for that key signature. Does anyone know how many flats are in the key of B flat minor? Okay, I gave it away, but it's five. But, uh, and we're going to be hearing that G flat a lot in this song. That's going to be a kicker for this. That's going to be part of what Chaos loves so much. We're going to find out. Okay, so this A natural is here, and we're thinking, oh man, this song's probably in D minor, or A minor, or A major, or something. Nope, it's in B flat minor. Why does that matter? Because a B flat minor tried with an A natural feels very unsettled. Doesn't sound spy like when it's in this inversion. Wow, it just sounds like a weird ring modulator overtone. We love it, we love it. Ooh. 
So that D flat that's being heard on top. Okay. The, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I'm crow. Oh, I don't want. What? Was that really an ad with a guy staring at his crotch? Well, that's kind of the opposite of this song. Uh, yikes. Okay. All right. So we got the D flat. Oh, this is great. No, D flat. D flat. B flat. So the melody is really what kick makes this feel a certain way. Having a D flat in the melody, it feels sort of uh, nefarious. If you were to have this chord, and I was just to go, ah, it would feel sort of like, wow, he's like elegant. He's so pretty. I bet he's a pretty boy. But if I were to go, ah, you'd go, okay, what's his role in this? Because he's, he's dark. He's out of the three notes he could have chosen, the one, the three, the five, he chose the third, which is the note that makes this song sad. And he's really hammering it home. It's like if someone's failing on a test and the person walks up behind and goes like, hey, just so you know, you're failing. Yeah, I know. I already know I'm failing. Why are you bringing up that part? Can't you bring up my outfit? Or how my smell good? Must you bring up all the things I suck at today? I know I'm failing. This chord's mine just so you know. Oh, yeah. Let's highlight it once more with this melody note. Let's really let you know that this is a sad moment, right? The melody helps that. Chaos Dragon. For anyone who cares about the story of this song, Chaos says, so basically what happens during this song is that Nairu wanders out into the dying forest to find food, only to get hurt for her troubles and bring back nothing. So Ori goes out to look for food himself. He finds some and brings it back to share with Nairu, only to find her asleep against a rock. He goes to wake her up to share the fruit. He shakes her, and she slumps over onto the floor unmoving. Ori curls up on her belly and cries as he realizes she's dead and he's all alone again. Oh, God. Is Ori the big character in this photo, or is Ori the small, little, cute, feline-looking animal? Wow, that's heavy. Ori's the small one. Oh, God. I don't know what's sadder. Okay, so... So no wonder there's a minor major 7 chord. This is essentially danger is coming. And the, the highlighting of the D flat is end sadness. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for subscribing, Shav. Uh, Shav23. I sing sub songs when people subscribe, and I'm so grateful you're here. I don't know when I'm this sad with this story to what I can sing, but I can say, Shav23, subscribe to me. I'll try not to make your sub song sound so sad. Shout 23, will you join me on this stream as much as possible? Shout 23. Thank you for subscribing me. Okay, thank you so much, Shav. Yeah, and it happy. Okay, but we're we're still in this vibe, so I kind of want to keep it sad because I want to I want to honor this moment. Okay, so we're in B flat minor. D flats are being heard. We know that. And now A naturals are being played in the melody. So really, it goes from B flat minor to B flat minor major seven. Now I'm not really. I'm just gonna roughly give a few bars here, but essentially, this is rubato, as they call it. Rubato is essentially played out of time. You go by the feel. I mean, there's probably a conductor giving it. There may be a tempo underneath this, but it's so amorphous, and there's no click. There's no rhythmic mo uh, motif. So it's perceived by us as rubato. You know. B, D flat, B flat, right? D flat, B flat. Uh, and then we're not going to an F chord. We're essentially going like this. We're essentially going. And it sounds sort of like an F augmented thing. The ear perceives this as resolved five chord, but it's not. 
it's F augmented. Hey, Namish too. Thank you for following. Okay, so it's really still in uh, B flat minor. It's just now minor major seven. And now the notes are D flat A natural, not 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 flat. Okay, the key signature is flat, but we're not doing that. Uh, kind of rhymed. Okay, so uh, let's keep going. Exactly. Yes, B steady just nailed it. In pop music, the lowest note defines the inversion, and in classical music as well, and in jazz. You're totally right. So root on the bottom is root position. Third on the bottom is first inversion. Fifth on the bottom is, be, you know, fifth being the lowest note is uh, second inversion. Seventh being the lowest note is third inversion. Yes, the ninth being in the root is fourth inversion. You just take whatever note you're doing in these chords, and if you put that in the bass, it's now inverted. What were this note removed down here? Oh, I moved two notes. What if this note moved down here? Well, now it's in third inversion. Because this would be root pos... Oh, shit. What did I do? Uh, root root position is the bottom one. First, you get the idea. I, I want to keep going. I'm too excited about this moment in the song. So overall, this chord, there's so much tension in this song. So we can almost call this all over B flat minor major seven. There are other chords happening. Polychords is what they call these. Okay. So there's sort of like I'm not even gonna put bars here. So I'm, I'm gonna do it like this. It's almost like F augmented. It's almost like, but it's also it's also like kind of. A, like F augmented over A, you know? And then G flat, some sort of G flat major seven moment happens. And then we're back to B flat minor. B flat minor? Oh, here we go. There's that F, there's that, again, just at some point these two chords happen. And then G flat major, or really just try it. So this happens twice in some amorphous form. I'm guessing this is when Ori finds finds Naru, because Ori is the oboe, it appears. Now we go to G-flat major 7, and now it really resolves to a G-flat major 7. So these things were happening over B-flat minor major 7, almost like a polychord like this, over B-flat minor major 7. It's like a fraction over B-flat minor major 7. Right? Lots of tensions happening here. It's almost as though you heard two conversations happening at once. Your mind's like, ah, it's so, ah. That's what was happening there. Now it settles. One of those chords that was inside this confusing moment is broken free. And of course made major seven, right? Because that's what was happening in the piece before. Remember when B flat major seven happened? What is B flat major as it relates to D minor? It is the sixth chord. What is G flat major seven as it relates to B flat minor? It's the sixth chord. So these are diatonically the sixth chord. So this is almost a theme coming back in. A heart a theme of heartbreak that was implied earlier and is now coming to fruition. Got it? Yeah, I bet so. Right, right. And that B flat. <laughs> That's a great chord. I rarely play that. I would analyze that as, oh, thank you. Oh, someone's hosting me. Thank you so much. Oh, Don, Don Palami's hosting me because people are coming in. Thank you for whoever just hopped in here. Hello, you're welcome. You, I mean, you are welcome to this channel. I don't mean thank you. You're welcome. Welcome is what I mean. All right. You are welcome here. Yeah, I mean, this is very confusing. This chord has so much tension. It's essentially F augmented over A. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, wait, my brain. Yeah, there we go. But then there's a B flat melody. So that creates almost like an F augmented add 11. Like, it's just a lot of tension. You know. Like, these are happening. Or, sorry. Yeah. 
kind of both of those are happening, the half step between the five and the augmented. Because it's kind of an add sharp five, really. But I'll say a plus for now, which means augmented. And then this suspension is rubbing up against this. Were I to play this lower, a half step lower, I could do this. Ah. Oh. Oh, let me think of this. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Those notes are happening. Here we go. Here. Huh. That. Up a half step. A lot of tension in that chord. And you can hear it. Listen. Great. And this also sounds like the scene in V for Vendetta, another great moment of that score, where the woman gets given a rose. Right? The doctor. I did the best I could. I was trying the best I could. And V for Vendetta, the guy says, well, I made sure it was painless, you know? Have you already done it? He's like, yes, sir. it already happened 10 minutes ago. It's like, jeez. So, heartbreak. Again. Oh, just straight F triad. Okay. Oh, don't look at that. That's an audition. Oh, boy. All right. Uh... Oh, that's the so session I was just doing. Where is my gaming thing? There we go. So now it's not augmented anymore. Just straight F. The five of B flat minor. Now we're in B flat. We're kind of just going to call this B flat minor seven, but it's really Dorian mode. Okay, hold up, hold up. So this happens, I think, for two bars. D flat major, the three chord diatonically. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Cool. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's kind of E flat over B flat. I mean, it is E flat over B flat. Oh, there's the chord. Yeah. yeah that'll, that'll get you. P flat minor. No, F minor again. Uh huh. Is that A flat? What is that? A flat add nine. Got it. Okay, something very cool is happening here at the end. So, um, so. This is this ending of this moment. That moment happens very rarely in any sort of pop music. 
Um, that tends to happen in really almost exclusively classical music. Also, I write songs with that too, but that's because I like this sort of nerdy stuff. Um, not nerdy, I like this sort of emotional stuff. So if you're in a minor key, you hear the five chord of the six, the five chord of the six, the five chord of the six. Okay? It feels the way this song portrays it. But also, if I'm in a major key, and I go three, four, three, six, three, four. Same chords, but you know, it just depends on the, on how we're perceiving the root. Is it B flat minor or D flat major? So this half step movement, something about that is very special to the ear because it only happens once. Oh geez, something's very special about that it only happens once per key. So in a key, if you're taking a major triad, there is no minor chord a half step away. There's one a whole step away. Okay. There's not one a half step away in any direction. Okay. What if I'm doing a minor chord somewhere? Surely there's a minor chord, uh, a lot of them, where there's a half step away from a major chord. No. Only one of them. The three to the four chord. So if I'm on the one chord, I can't go any direction to get a minor chord a half step away. So it doesn't, they don't feel like they're really related. Uh, if I go to the five chord, same thing. The minor chord's a, half, a whole step away. But at between the three and four chord, right here, they're a half step away. So they're very relatable. That's what happens right here. F minor to G flat. Okay? Half step away. One half step. Half step. Okay? So that is a real emotional moment to the ear. Check it out. That's the moment I bet when you guys went, oh, dang. Check it out. Right here, here it is, here it is. Bam, right now, F minor to G flat. Oh, that's where it hits us. Now it also hits us going down to the F minor, from the A flat to the F minor. The F minor itself is already sad because this whole song we've only heard F dominant. F major, F augmented, F augmented of B flat minor, the five chord. And yet now it's the true five chord. It's revealed. What's what's the key signature for B flat major? Last time I checked, there's an A flat in it, right? A flat. But every time we play the F chord in this song, we have A naturals. Lots of A naturals. There's an A natural in here. It's a hidden A. It's inside of it, okay? So there are lots of A naturals, which makes it feel harmonic minor. Okay, finally, the true quality of the key, which is this, A flat, happens. What's the third of F minor? A flat, finally. It's revealed, right? But it's not, all's not lost yet. It doesn't go minor yet. There's still hope. Right? And then that A flat add nine, because it's A flat, instead of being, which you feel kind of like, yay, it's uh, we're preparing you. We're preparing you for where we're going. We are going there. Okay, so this song is sad for a lot of reasons. I think we get, went through a lot of them just now. But it's the uh, the fact that it has tension up top where we know something bad has happened, right? The minor major seven moment. Like, what the heck is going on in this? Minor major seven chords are happening. We have augmented chords, poly chords. So already a weird enough chord on augmented triad over a minor major seven chord, like really giving you this weird sort of what? Now, to be fair, the top three notes of B flat melodic minor, um, I shouldn't call it melodic minor, a B flat minor major seven. Let me show you this. The top three notes, so this is B flat, D flat, F and A, natural. Okay, the top three notes of a melodic, or I'm sorry, of a minor major seven chord, are an augmented triad. F A D flat. Oh, thanks for following, Solly. So D flat could be pronounced C sharp as well, and harmonically. So the top three notes of a melodic minor chord are an augmented triad. Uh, it's like this. 
Augmented, right? Da, da, da. Those are the top three notes. So I've augmented over B flat minor major seven, not a huge deal. But it's the way the melody notes are constructed with the D flat being really hit. And there's truly a B flat minor triad underneath it. So this is very tense. This is also incredibly tense. G flat over B flat minor major seven. To give you an idea of what notes are in this, here's the B flat minor major seven chord. B flat, D flat, just so you have all the notes spelled out correctly and you really know. Over, uh, I'm sorry, this is the chord that's underneath everything. Over uh, these notes, G flat, B flat, D flat. Now there obviously are common tones. This is the only non-common tone, but we have different instruments playing these notes. So it's very, ah, it's very jarring. So tense, so tense, so tense. And then we go to this Dorian moment. Da, 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 da. So now we're kind of in the key of quote unquote A flat major, the second mode of which is B flat Dorian, right? Hey, Jason Bauer, yeah, I'm using good notes. It's called good notes. It's on my iPad. So my iPad's right here, connected to an Elgato game capture HD60S Plus through HDMI. And then I zoom in and I can write and stuff. Pretty fancy, eh? Uh, so, um,. So, uh, finally at the end, we're going Dorian, we're in E-flat, and then we get to this moment where it's finally in B-flat minor. We have arrived at the true place. No more distance, no more guessing and questioning. We are sad. You know what I'm saying? That's what happens there. And this F minor chord really highlights that. So, let's listen through while I play. I'll play along with whatever we just learned. You know? Let's see what happens. Hope, hope, hope. Right? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So something like that. It's a crazy piece. That is messed up. Obviously, I was just kind of messing around over the whole thing, but that's what happens when we analyze things. We're able to to go for it. Oh, wow, Greg Blum says, next do the Wii theme song. <laughs> Honestly, it's a good transition. It's a great idea. <laughs> hey, Grego. When you think you can make it to the ice cream stand in time, but it's close as you get there. Ah, oh, that stinks. By the way, I like your sub badge. It looks like my merch, which you can buy at zancarter.com. If you want these shirts, just saying. I should make ver- I should call my merch company and make them have blue, purple, rainbow, different colors like you guys have. Although the rainbow would cost a lot of money to make, you'd be surprised. Um, so we analyzed some really great stuff today. We really only have 10 minutes left, and I, I really have to get back to this recording session. I have at least five hours of work ahead of me, probably, and I've already put in about five, five or six hours today alone. Um, it's a really great song that my friends wrote, and I'm excited about it. And I can show you how I work. This is what I transcribe. It's not a hard song, uh, but I always chart things out like this so I can, uh, you know, have uh, have uh, the chords in the in the form. So I do this stuff in real life. All these anal- analyzing tools. This is a big part of what I do. I know it would be a great idea. Son of a one in blue would be great. Um, so maybe I'll call them and see if they can quickly, do, you know, draw those up. Um, but. Uh, yeah, guys. I mean, I, I think we're doing Donkey Kong Country two next week. Um, there are a couple things I need to to fix and change um, and update in the streaming world, but that's not that's not one of them. We're gonna do that Donkey Kong one. So I mean, I'll probably draw from all the Donkey Kong things because I'm you know I I get to I get to I get to I get to choose. Um, actually, let me put it back here. Uh, this has been such a great stream, guys. I love doing these so much. Um, the purple logo badge looks really cool. Well, thank Chaos for that, because he drew it up. He Well, I mean, I gave him my logo, but he color co- coordinated them. Um, but so many great songs in this score. I mean, I had some of the stuff on uh, Her Rage. Like, what's going on here? Kuro's Tale, Her Rage. surprised that was the music they had for that commercial yeah Derek yeah Naviotti well that's tricky because I tend to record my tone when I go through my pedals my guitar tone is sort of lost because the pedals I take I take the output and some of these off I'm sorry, I make the output mix so that no guitar is heard. I do like that. Depends on the song or what I'm trying to record. Cool. Cool. This is very... Yeah, this is great. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. We're just going through these. Basically what's happening is that we're just doing rapid round. That had uh, some... some uh... Danny Elfman moments, some dominant seven chords happened after a major seven chord up a tritone, which makes you feel very da 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 da. That happened a lot in that. That was nice. And again, it was very anthemic and strong in its finish. I like that.
Thank you for following Next Soul. Welcome. It's interesting. These are the same core changes as what's happening in the Blinded Forest, but with an up tempo, you know, drum beat pattern. And it seems like maybe uh, something's going to be healed or fixed. I haven't played the game. Hey, Stellar Dork. Well, they're in my VODs right now, which will last for a month, but uh, I am planning on doing that. Yeah, I just haven't had the time yet to upload them. Brittany460, thanks for following. It's great. That, ooh, that G flat over this chord, which is, check it out. That G flat, is happening over an F minor chord. So this is a trick that I use a lot. All right, F sharp minor. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. so this song's in B minor now. We're up a half step. Um, any diatonic note from B, from whatever key you're in, works over the other chords of that key. It creates tension. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. yes, it's tense by itself. Oh no, whatever. That, that was a mistaken chord. Well, if there's context before and after. So that's a great use of tension and, and diatonic awareness. Yeah, also, Grego, to answer that question and chaos, because I've never talked about this, I have a bunch of games that I want to do, but I've been so overwhelmed like becoming a streamer has been like whoa and then we're three months in now it's like go oh, we have subscribers we have a real channel ah. oh make sure your computer works ah. oh also uh, try to figure out how your industry might not come back for three years and make oh god oh also mart parts are changing in personal life and things are oh ah. it's just been so freaking nuts um so my mental bandwidth has been like very small uh, and then I'm mixing my jazz record with my brother, and I'm mixing my solo stuff, and talking to a new manager, and potentially pr approaching a publishing deal because of the songs with Avril. And it's like it's just so much, too much. So I love what Chaos has done. He's taken initiative and been like, "Let me help put up polls, guys. Let's vote on songs. What do you want?" But I already have a list in my head of, of scores I want to do. I want to do Shadow Run from the Super Nintendo, especially that intro theme song. I want to do. Uh, um, specific Legend of Zelda series ones like Wind Waker has some odd music in it I definitely want to do Banjo-Kazooie I want to do Donkey Kong Country I want to do um, uh, Chaos or I'm sorry uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Adventures from NES I want to do Turtles in Time I, there's so many games that have fun scores 8-bit, 16-bit and all that but I haven't, haven't, haven't given myself even a second and usually when I end these streams I'm like I am tired and then I have to fix stuff and get emotes and all that. So I think I'm about a month or two away from really things becoming clear. Like, okay, I'll know more about when my musical is coming back here and, and if I'm going to be acting more and now I'm auditioning more. So there's just a lot of like, whoa, uh, hey, a lot of change. Um, thanks, Chaos. That will be awesome, man. Thank you so much. Um, but um, guys, this has been such a great stream. I'm so thankful for all the subscribers we we're close. To, uh, oh, I'll probably analyze movie songs one day too. I also, this is a secret for the 81 viewers or whatever we have right now. It's, it says from five minutes ago, I have a really fun idea that I want to do one day on stream. It'll probably be a monthly thing, not a weekly thing. I want to take a uh, copyright, un like protected, like un, you know, nothing scary, uh, old vintage silent movies, and I want to live improvise score them. How awesome would that be? So this is an idea, just Greg, if you're still here, this is an idea I have with Tommy. So we were going to do this in L.A. literally March of this year, but then I got cast in hair and then the world closed. So this idea was going to be he and I together would do this. Now it'll just be me. Um, so, so I'd put up a movie and I'd be in a little box in the corner and we'd be watching it together and I would be live scoring it. And I'd watch the movie once or twice before to make sure I don't screw everything up. Um... I'd have my acoustic guitar there. I'd have my electric. I'd change it based on what the score needs. Um, I think that could be a really fun movie night. Now, Greg, the idea originally was to do it at Madame Siam in L.A., have beanbag chairs brought in, have about 50 people, and Tommy and I would live do it with headphones and a mic personally for ourselves. Like, go to F major 7, go to F major augmented, you know, go to go to D melodic minor, whatever. Um, 
but I don't know when we'll be able to do that together. So I think that's going to be a really, really fun thing to do because then we have a movie night and it's like a set stream. Like it's half an hour, you know, it's old silent movies were short. Uh, we could do two of them a night sometimes. Like I have a, and get your movie popcorn at home and maybe we get a sponsor involved. Like maybe we two would come back and sponsor it or a popcorn company. And I don't know, there could be some really fun ideas there. Um, but first things first, I got to get my songs mixed. The jazz record I have, uh, number one, it's almost done. We're played through 16 different album orders we're like so close to the right album order which means we'll be able to master and get like the exact seconds of space between each song and then i'll start finishing mixing i want to have faith again ever after uh, so, something in the water maybe i'm young and put out an ep the question is if i get signed to a record deal i can't really do that stuff soon i have to wait for the deal to come through i have to wait for them to market it put it on the radio or i do that sort of lamer thing of like, yeah, let's just get the music out there. And uh, so I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Um, but all these things are happening. And to be totally frank to the homies that are here watching when I, yeah, exactly. Just be six part of it. Part of stream it. Um, right. Oh, you mean with Tommy? Yeah, that, that is a way we could do it. You know, that's true. But I, you know me, Grego, I've been too, uh, too intense about the, the, the stuff. Um, like I'm feel safe for this another couple of weeks of just solo uh but um there's um uh, i forgot my train of thought uh there's the music there's all that oh that on top of that when i stream every couple of days the current schedule i have it's like oh man it's i keep getting a free moment and i'm like oh stream gotta get started and it's you know i love doing it but it's definitely i have to figure out how i can reserve energy for because right now my work week's like 80 hours, I think. 20 hours of streaming plus 60 hours of music and all that. And it's just like, <sighs> so I have, to, I have to solve this. You need to buy more popcorn, Jess. Um, mm. Anywho, today's been amazing. Let's raid Tammy because she keeps raiding us. And she's still streaming. So I think we can catch her just in the nick of time um, to thank her for the first two music theory uh of gaming streams, she she freaking rated us like crazy, and I'd like to give her some love if possible. Where is my? I guess I could just do it here. I don't need to. Oh, that's loud. Okay, uh, let's do it, guys. Guys, you're the best. I I I love doing these, and I'm so grateful to you guys. And I hope you guys have an amazing night. Let's give some love to everyone. All right, credits. Thank you for the love. Says, I guess, uh, Streamlabs. Don't thank you for donating, Hulu Step. Thank you for the cheers, Vanessa, 12 rounds, and Wendy Harper. Thank you for moderating Chaos Dragon and the fake ones. Uh, Brittany for following Neo Soul, I guess, Soul something, name, uh, Professor Milk, uh, Circumcised Gamer, Alexi, Rigor Memoir, uh, Ida, whatever, Peach something, Peach Con, subscribing, Gian12131, we got W Ray, we got Burton Stan, we got Shav23. Thank you guys so much for making this such a great stream, and I will see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Acoustic Mondays, my acoustic concert series. See you there.